even if you are excited for the word tonight. I am truly, truly excited. Um, and it's that time when the word will be brought to us. Now, the duty is mine to introduce tonight's speaker. And I'm a little bit biased. Now I have a lot of favorite pastors, but this one is my favorite, favorite, favoritist. Um, if there wasn't such a word before, there is a new word, Sister Nicole, my favoritist pastor. So I am uh, I'm a little bit biased tonight about this one because not only do we share the same last name, but we look alike. I believe, and we have adopted each other many, many years ago on the campus of West Indus College when it was West Indus College. He became my brother, I became his sister. So he's my brother from another mother. And so tonight he's unofficially my official brother. Um, Pastor Samuels is one of the few pastors who visited me when I left the church. Now, I left the church for 10 years and that's another whole different chapter and verse. But Pastor Samuels was one of the few pastors, not only did he reach out to me, but he came to visit. That's my brother, oh, I love him so much. So let me get on to his introduction. Glenn Octavius Samuels was born in the parish of St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. He received his bachelor degree of theology from West Indus College, now Northern Caribbean University, and a master's in theology from Andrews University. Pastor Samuels currently serves as the president of West Jamaica Conference. For more than 20 years, he served as district pastor, Sabbath school and personal ministries director, ministerial fraternity president, ministerial secretary and the president. He also served as exec executive secretary, ministerial secretary and personal ministers director for West Indies Union Conference. He was speaker and director of the national television ministry, Behold He Cometh from 1995 to 2002. Since 2002, he has been speaker of the Word of Hope telecast. In December 2010, he was elected Ministerial Secretary, Sabbath School and Personal Ministries Director of the newly formed Jamaica Union Conference. Pastor Samuels has conducted numerous seminars, revivals, lectures, evangelistic series throughout the Americas, Canada, Europe, and the Caribbean. He's one of the guest speakers at the General Conference World Ministerial Council in Toronto in 2000. His passion is to see the church transformed by the spirit of the living God into a vital, vigilant, visible, visionary, vocal instrument for Christ, touching lives, serving as a victorious agent of social, moral, and spiritual transformation. He's supported in ministry by his wife, Dursella, a senior teacher of mathematics at Manchester High School. They are blessed with three beautiful daughters, Glenica Faith, Glenadine Hope, and Glenella Charity. It is his commitment to spread his life, to spend his life helping others. It is my pleasure to present to you my friend and my brother, after the song of meditation brought to us once again by Sister Nicole Cunningham, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Pastor Glenn Octavius Samuels. You're muted, my sister, you're muted. You're muted, Sister Nicole. There you go.
I've come too far to look back again. There's nothing behind me. All the pleasures I used to have have all faded. There's a new day ahead for me. All my heartaches, they're over. I left them at Calvary, where my new life began. I've come too far to look back. My feet have walked through the valley. I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers, desert places I've known. But I'm there in the home show. The redeemed are rejoicing. Heaven's angels are singing I've come too far to look back look around there's unhappiness some see no reason for leaving life can give you a broken dream Full of heartache and tears. Turn around, don't look back again. Face the new day before you. Oh, yes. Just place your heartaches in Jesus' hands. For we can mend broken dreams. I've come too far to look back. My freedom walked through the valleys. I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers. Desert places I've known, but I'm there in the home show. The redeemed are rejoicing, heaven's angels are singing. I've come to far to look back, but I'm there in the home so the redeemed are rejoicing, heaven's angels are singing, I've come to far to look back. Too far to look back. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Nikki, for blessing our hearts with that special song. I've come too far to look back. I'm nearing the home shore. It's almost time to be home. I bring you special greetings from Montego Bay, Jamaica, and uh, I want the world to know that I would have wanted to be introduced by no other person than the one who did the job just now, my special, dearest, so special sister, Dawn of the tribe of Samuels. And uh, it's good to see you, Dawn, and I, I, I look forward to connecting in closer circles. But it's a joy hearing you. I want to uh, thank the members of the Bethany Bronx Bethany Church 
for the invitation that has brought me in your presence in this their special week. You know, in the lineup, they have given me the job just to warm you up, but the better speakers are coming up. And if there's any night you should have missed, it should have been tonight. But you sure can't miss any other night for the week because the more powerful speakers are the ones next to come. Thank you, my pastor and friend, for the invitation. And thank you, Sharon, for always staying in touch. Now, the person that Dawn introduced to you couldn't come. So my mother's son is here to represent the one who was introduced to you. I would like to let you know that I didn't bring any fancy food to the pulpit this evening, just a plain old word from God's old book. I've come to tell you that our word tonight seeks to make one simple point, that there is a God who can be trusted, and that the Bible underlines the fact that he is the only one who can declare the end from the beginning, and that the difference between the true God and the false God is simply this. The true God made everything down here, including the stuff that false gods are made out of. Tonight, our message, our title that is given is, It's Almost Time. It's Almost Time. It's funny that humankind, we are creatures caught in time for a brief and fleeting moment. We, life was given to us without our asking for it. And life will be taken from us whether we want to let it go, yes or no. Time, this stuff called time. Uh, uh, all of us have the same amount of time in each day, but, but we're always running out of time. It's funny how that everybody across the length and breadth of the world, regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of the content of your head or the texture of your hair, we all have 60 seconds to each minute. We all have the same amount of minutes to each hour. We all have seven days to each week and yet we seem to be always running out of time. We, we, we are caught in this hurry. We are caught in the stuff and, and we're always wanting to know what will tomorrow bring? Uh, 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 how much time do I have left? Uh, we ask the doctors when we take our sick folk there, doctor, how much time does mommy have left? Uh, how much time daddy has left? Because th there is this tyranny of time. We are running out of time. Let me get right on into our word tonight if there is any prophecy that underlines the veracity of God it's Daniel chapter 2 if there is any prophecy that declares beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is a God it is Daniel 2 and so uh, I'd like to begin tonight by uh, reading in your hearing from Isaiah chapter 46 God says remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else I am God and there is none like me remember turn back the hands of time and 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 go back as far back as you can and and and, and know there is none like me I'm glad to tell you that we serve a God who who has no beginning and he has no ending he has no mother and he has no daddy he said he is the only one who can declare the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and, uh, and I will do all my pleasure and I say amen. God says, if you are tempted to flex your fist in his face, if you are tempted to take God lightly, he said, remember the former things of old. Go back as far back as you can. Turn back the hands of time and see what I did to men and nations who failed to take me seriously. And so here comes Jesus. He's sitting on the Mount of Olives. The Bible said he is talking to his disciples about the destruction of Jerusalem and the end of the world. This God in human flesh is declaring that Jerusalem would be destroyed. The temple would be destroyed. And, and as he sat there, the disciples came to him and they asked him, they asked him saying, Master, what 
shall, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming on the end of the world? They, they ask him the question in Matthew 24 and verse 3. And he spent the rest of the two chapters, all of 24 and all of 25, answering this one question. What shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And I've come to tell you, it is almost time. Jesus said in, in Luke 21 and verse 22, that our day, these be the days of vengeance. He pointed them forward. He opened the door. He pulled by the curtain and he showed them a glimpse in the future. And he said, before I come back, There'll be days of vengeance that all the things written shall be fulfilled. Everything that's prophesied will be fulfilled. And he said of our times, Luke 21, 26, men's hearts will be failing them for fear because of the things which are coming on the earth. There is never a time like the present time. There's fear all around us made even more potent by coronavirus, there's fear all around, as I said, made even more potent than coronavirus. I try to get the most recent stats from the corona issues and around the world, 22,511,187 persons are directly affected by COVID-19. 22 million 511,187 persons have contracted coronavirus. Can you hear the staggering figure? 789,728 dead in a few short months. The Bible said men's hearts are failing them for fear. And across the mighty U.S. of A., 5,559,547, the total number of cases, and the staggering figure of 173,798 persons dead in a few short months from COVID-19. 173,000 men's hearts are failing them for fear. And I listened to CNN and they said that a thousand deaths per day, the current death rate by COVID-19 in a few months. I've come by this pulpit to tell you that the God of the Christian church, in order to help you understand that you have enough in the word to know there is a God in a few short verses in Daniel 2, he outlined 2,500 years prophetically. He outlined 2,500 years of human history before it began. So let's go quickly. I'm going to Daniel 2 to make the point tonight that it is almost time. We're looking at history as God's story. We're looking at history as God's way of declaring before it happened the things that would happen. And so to cut the story short, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, this king, went to bed, had a great dream. He built his mighty kingdom. The Bible said one day he looked and he said, is not this great Babylon that I have built? And every student know that, that Babylon is the first kingdom to rule the world. This great king had a dream. He's looking at his kingdom. He's contemplating the future. He's wondering what will happen. And the Bible said in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, beginning at verse 31. The Bible said here, let me read here. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image, this great image whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and thigh of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet. 
that were of iron and clay and break them in pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor and the wind carried them away. Verse 36 said, this is the dream and we will tell the interpretation before thee. Here it is then, beloved, that Daniel was brought before the king. The king had a dream. He couldn't recall the dream. He called in his wise men. He called in his soothsayers. But let me tell you, they could never declare the dream. The things of God can only be understood by the people of God. But our God is so amazing. He would take one man's dream and tell it to another man. Not only would he tell Daniel the dream, but the Bible said he gave Daniel the interpretation. In these verses, Daniel chapter 2, 31 to 35, 2,500 years of human history wrapped up right here. The four kingdoms that would rule the world right here. The amazing thing as we go through very quickly is that God declared that he is the only one who is able to declare the end from the beginning. He's the only one who's able. And so beloved, he gave this ancient king a dream that would last down to the closing days of our history so that you can know there is no God like the great God that made the heavens and the earth. There is no God like sovereign Yahweh when you are tempted to flex your fist in the face of God. Take note and understand he's the only one who can declare the end from the beginning. And so very quickly then, this first kingdom to rule the world is Babylon, 605 to 539. Watch this, watch this, hear the preacher. Every single one of these kingdoms were overthrown by a weaker kingdom. So you can know the hand of God Almighty is at work here. And I'm glad to tell you. That the Christian church has nothing to fear for the future unless it should take its hand out of the hand of God. The Bible tells me in 2 Peter 1.21 that the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so Babylon is represented by the head of gold. And Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, Thou art this head of gold, but after thee shall arise another. Let me pause here. What a phrase. After thee shall arise another. King, you are this head of gold. But make no mistake about it, you are not a permanent fixture in God's creation. Now, now hear the preacher, hear this. In those days, in those days, kings wouldn't want to hear that. As a matter of fact, they would just snap their finger and you're dead. But Daniel was under orders, divine orders, to declare the prophecy. And I want to tell you, when you're in the hands of God, if God doesn't want you dead, there's no king or potent on earth who can take you out. If God doesn't want you dead, and that's why every true child of God ought to walk with confidence that you are in the hands of God and there's no power that can take you out. No weapon that form against you shall prosper when you know that you know that you know, hallelujah, that your life is wrapped tight in the hands of the living God. I wish I had some people to preach to. Hear me carefully. The Bible said, after thee shall arise another. Can I say to every dictator, can I say to every bad man, gunman, every drug pusher, can I say to everyone who feels that you are a permanent fixture here, after you shall arise another. Can I tease you, husband or wife? Enjoy your married life now. Enjoy your partner now. Because, because listen, if you worry yourself to death, after you shall arise another. You'll discover that you worry yourself to death over stuff you shouldn't worry about. And you're dead. And the same thing you've been worrying about, he comes right in. He's sleeping in your king-size bed. He's enjoying your honey and you can't do a thing because you're dead. And don't you know, have no power. After thee shall arise another. Enjoy your relationship. 
Love now. Be genuine. Do what you want to. Do what you can. But know that you are not a permanent fixture here. I say to every president, every powerful ruler, if time should last, somebody else will come after you. So the head of gold represents the first kingdom to rule the world. Babylon by name, 605 to 539. But the prophecy says another kingdom would come. And so the media Persian kingdom came up. 539 to 331, if I had the time to walk you through these bloody battles that were fought as kingdoms would overthrow the next one. But hear this and mark this, as you would notice in the image we have here, it is always an inferior substance that represents the kingdom that overthrew the greater kingdom. Just so you can know the hand of God Almighty is at work. So the first kingdom was Babylon, 605 to 539. And by the way, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, who, who began the kingdom here, who was the man with a dream, uh, he died and his son, uh, Nabopolassar, became the ruler. And he had a son by the name of Belshazzar. And so Belshazzar was reigning when, when, when the Persian kingdom came in. Belshazzar would insult God. Belshazzar would drink wine in God's holy vessels. Belshazzar would summon God's vessels, God's communion vessels. And that night in the dance floor, that night in his party, that night whilst he was carrying on and all the naked belly dancers were there, his end came and the prophecy declared the king Double Babylon was brought to an end. Belshazzar's blood was mingled with his wine on the dance floor. And the media Persian kingdom took over. Then came the third kingdom. The kingdom of Greece. 331 to 168 BC. And the Grecian kingdom. This powerful kingdom. The youngest of them all. Alexander. Age 33. When he conquered the world, Alexander was the youngest one. And he would go from place to place, this mighty conqueror. And history would tell you uh, such amazing conquests, beloved. But here, there's a story of his conquest. Alexander would have one of his mighty generals hoisting a huge candle. In those days, kingdoms and, and nations and cities were were walled around. Walls were built for the defense of the city. Here comes Alexander and his army and they'll close the gates to keep out this uh, mighty general. And they'd hoist a white candle, a lighted candle and his soldier would cry out as they blow the trumpet, ye people behind the gates and the walls surrender! Surrender while the candle burned! And as the candle was burning, the soldier would cry, It's almost time to surrender. For when the candle goes out, Alexander shall attack and your blood shall flow like water. And sometimes they'd surrender. and Their lives would be spared although they'll be made slaves. But if they refuse to surrender, when the candle goes out, the soldiers with their battering ram would batter down the walls and the gates and they'll plunge the city in chaos and bloodshed. 331, 168, the belly and thigh of brass and he died at a young age with no more world to conquer. Then came the fourth kingdom. So let me retract. The first kingdom was the head of gold. That's Babylon. The second kingdom, the breast and arms of silver, that's the media Persian kingdom. The third kingdom, the belly and thigh of brass, that's the Grecian kingdom. And now we are at the fourth kingdom, the mighty Roman kingdom from 168 BC to the mid fourth century. Rome ruled the world. Rome was in charge when Christ was born. Caesar commanded the world to be taxed because he was king of the world. Hear me carefully. The prophecy is right on target just as God said it would be. And if you are tempted to take God lightly, turn back the hands of time and see 
the unmistakable fulfillment of prophecy. The prophecy came not by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. God Almighty outlined the future. The Bible told us he is the only one who can declare the end from the beginning. And you don't have to worry about tomorrow. Your God is already there. I'm going to say it again. You don't have to worry about your tomorrow. Your God is already there. He has already secured your future. All you've got to do is to place your hands in the hands of God. Thank God for Bronx Bethany Church opening the word of God this week. That you may understand the unmistakable prophetic hand of the living God. And so in this fourth kingdom of Rome, Daniel would tell you something else. Daniel said, you saw us until you get down to the end of the legs he said whereas you saw that the feet were blended together iron and clay there's an amazing text here that i wanted to look at the text said they shall mingle themselves uh, daniel 238 said and whereas the children of men dwell the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heavens have he given into their hand. That's speaking about Nebuchadnezzar. But I'm taking it down now to the closing scenes of the prophecy. I'm going to verse 41. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. There shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. Let me go over this text again to make a point. He said, you saw the toes, ten toes in the feet, part of potter's clay, part of iron. He said, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with miry clay. Rome, my friend, gave birth to the ten divisions of Europe. Out of the Roman kingdom, Rome fell politically in 476 AD. The barbarians from the east, they came and they plunged Rome into chaos. Rome became morally corrupt. Rome became morally bankrupt. Rome had more holidays than working days. Rome was pleasure, man. You ought to read Edward Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire and know when a nation descends into moral debauchery. When a nation abandons the claim of God, when a nation becomes brutal and corrupt and morally depraved, the hand of God will bring you down to dust. Iron represents the part of the Roman kingdom, but the toes represent, my friend, the ten divisions of Europe. The Bible said they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another. The Bible said in verse 43, you saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Let me explain this to you. Throughout Europe, bloody wars have been fought, and in order to stem the bloodshed. They came up with the scheme. They thought that they could defy the prophecy. They thought that they could, uh, by intermarriage, unite Europe. What did they do? They had weddings between all of these kingdoms. And so at one point, my friend in history, every head of Europe was related to the kingdom of England. All of the various heads were related by marriage. Charlemagne tried and he failed. Hitler tried and he failed. Hitler almost succeeded. Hitler plunged the world in chaos, my friend, in World War II. And they thought that the world would be given over in the hand of this madman. But the prophecy stood in his way. The word of God says, there shall be no other earthly kingdom except the kingdoms of the living God. 
The Bible said in verse 44, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Hear me carefully. We are down now in the toes of the image. The head of gold is gone. That's the first kingdom. The breast and arm of silver gone. That's the second kingdom. The belly and thigh of brass gone. That's the third kingdom. The legs of iron gone. That's the fourth kingdom. And the Bible said only four kingdoms would rule the world. But in the days of the divided parts of the fourth kingdom, that's where we are. The ten divisions of current Europe all has come out of the Roman territory all tried by intermarriage to secure peace to secure world unity in 1945 after they took care of Hitler the United Nations was born mankind got tired of bloody wars and they thought that this body would bring the world together you know the facts where that is concerned. The United Nations have now become a divided nation. You know the facts where these are concerned. There's a time in American history where America was, was seen as a defender of the helpless around the world. But now there's a doctrine. America first and all the others must fit for yourself. Listen to me carefully. The prophecy, the word of God, my friend, in unmistakable clarity is being fulfilled. In the days of these kingdoms shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom. And I stopped by Bethany Bronx to tell the world, it is almost time. It is almost time for the final kingdom. It's almost time. Look around you. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. Look around you. There's pestilence in diverse places. Look around you. And I have a word for the church. I have a word for myself. I have a word for every red-blooded member of the family of God. Buckle up your shoes. Tighten your belt. It's going home time. It is almost time. The unmistakable hand of God Almighty is striking all the hour. It's almost time. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. Because of the things happening on the earth in the days of these kings. Shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom? Thank God there's going to be a kingdom where there shall be no taxes. There's going to be a kingdom. Isaiah said in Isaiah 42, 45, 22, Look unto me and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. The God who declares the end from the beginning. The God who outlined prophetic history that shows the future down to the end of time. This God says in Isaiah 45 23, I have sworn by myself the word is gone out of my mouth. The word, the prophetic word is gone out of my mouth. The outlining of the future of the world is gone out of my mouth. The signs of the end, the word is gone out of my mouth. And God says, it shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Tell the world, I say, there's only one true monarch. There's only one true and living God. He made the world in six days. Tell the world that the Bible, the word of God stands indestructible because it came from the mind of the living God. I'm done. I'm done. But hear me as I walk from the pulpit. Listen to me carefully. It is almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say, the Bible said in the days of these kingdoms, shall God Almighty set up his kingdom. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces, consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever and ever and ever and ever. Hallelujah! And I hear the last book of the Bible said, 
Well, let me take this text. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The Bible declares, my friend, that a stone cut out without hands brings to an end the kingdoms of this world and every old time Bible student would have heard the song, Daniel saw the stone cut out without hands, crushing the world. It is the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. It's the kingdom of the Lord God. And John in the last book of the Bible said, I saw a new heaven and the new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. He said, I saw the dwelling place of God is with mankind. I'm tired of this world. A thousand people dying every day in one nation because of COVID-19. In one nation, 173,000 already dead one virus one virus so many millions are affected one virus so many thousands are dead one virus and in a matter of days airports are shut down business shut down wall street shut down main street shut down back street shut down one virus Nightclubs are shut down. One virus. Dance halls are shut down. One virus. Classrooms are shut down. One virus. Quarantine the world. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. It is almost time. It is almost time for the Lord to come. It is almost time. And I want to ask you a question. Are you ready? Signs of the times are everywhere. The Bible said the stars of heaven would fall. That has already happened. The sun wouldn't give her light. It's done. The moon turned to blood. It's done. Great earthquakes in diverse places. And the songwriter said it's almost time for the Lord to come. I hear the people say the stars of heaven are growing dim. It must be the breaking of the day. The next verse tells us something else. The signs foretold in the sun and moon, in earth and sea and sky, aloud proclaim to all mankind the coming of the master draweth night. It's almost time. It must be time for the waiting church. Here's a word for the church. Hear me, saints of the living God. It's time to stop playing church. Straighten out. A dying world needs a living church. Listen to me carefully. A sick society needs a healthy church. A society in doubt need to know that the church has a more sure word of prophecy. A society where men don't even know if their vaccine will work. I hear doctors saying there's no certainty the vaccine will work. There's no knowledge of what side effects we'll get from the vaccine. Must be time for the waiting church to cast her pride away. And the last stanza of the song, the last verse of the song tells us something else. Go quickly out the streets and lanes in the broad highway. Call the maimed, call the halt, call the blind. It's time to be ready for them to come. It is almost time. Tell them to come. It is almost time. Tell the black slider to come back home. It is almost time. Tell the wanderer to come on in. It is almost time. Tell the one who's flexing his fist in the face of God. There is a God who declares the end from the beginning. It is almost time. Come on in. Matthew 24, 14 said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. Go quickly in the streets and lanes. Preach the gospel. Live it in your life. Love. Care. Because folk will not know how much, they will not care how much you know until they know how much you care. And it's time for us to enflesh the gospel. Go quickly out in the streets and lanes and love them into the kingdom of God. It is almost time. I'm done.
but I ask you the question, are you ready? We all have 60 seconds to each minute, but every now and then we find ourselves running out of time. We all have the same 24 hours to each day. We all have the same seven days to each week. Wherever around the world you go, every person, we all have the same 24 hours to each day. Seven days to each week. But every now and then, we find ourselves running out of time. The head of gold is gone. The breast and arms of silver. Read your history book. The belly and thigh of brass. The legs of iron. We're down in the toenails of the image of Daniel too. We are right where the prophet said would be. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. It is almost time. May the Lord God draw us closer to himself. It is almost time. And I challenge you, watching via the internet around the world, join the Bethany Bronx Church tomorrow evening and all the evenings for this week. And hear ye the word of God Almighty and know you're running out of time. You're running out of time. It's almost time for the Lord to come. Are you ready? Are you ready? God won't twist your arm behind your back and make you obey. He's given you eyes to see, ears to hear, and a brain to understand. Use it. We'll see you tomorrow night. Let us pray, Almighty God. Thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you for the unmistakable prophetic word of certainty. You said it. There would be only four kingdoms. You said it. A weaker kingdom would overthrow the stronger one. And everyone underlines the authenticity of your word. That you are the only true and living God. Thank you for your word. Here we are, a frightened people. A frightened people. Whether we are Gen Yers or Gen Zers. A frightened people. Because everything that the word has said is happening before our very eyes. May your Holy Spirit lead us to full surrender because it's almost time. Thanks God for amazing grace that the vilest sinner tonight can know that there is cleansing in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's a healing balm in Gilead. Bless the organizers of the program. Reward their faith and their planning for the glory of your name and the saving of the lost as are asking in Jesus' name. And together, God's children say, amen. It's my joy being with you. The grace of God be with you. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Don't miss the preacher tomorrow night. God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. We want to thank Pastor Samuel so much for the reminder that it's almost time. He also reminded us that we are in God's hands to don't worry about tomorrow because God is already there. If you have heard something tonight, if you have not yet accepted Christ as your personal savior, or you just want a closer walk with God, we have some decision cards. It's in the chat right now. We encourage you to sign these cards. If you need someone to pray for you, if you just need encouragement, or if you want to join the body of Christ, sign those, uh, those decision cards. I want you to know they're confidential, so only the Bible workers will have your information, but do go ahead and sign them. They're in the chat right now. All you have to do is click on the link. It will open for you and you go ahead and sign them. While you are signing, um, I hope that this song will help to open your heart and receive Christ as your personal savior. After the singing of the song, we will break away into our prayer room 
where someone will be waiting to pray with you and to pray for you, after which we will come back for our final exercise tonight. Go ahead and sign those cards. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your
Yes, as we rejoin our main room tonight, I'd like to first of all give God thanks for bringing us through our first night of our campaign tonight. And I don't know about you, but I was truly, truly blessed. I pray that all of us have received a blessing tonight and that we will tell friends and neighbors, invite someone to come taste and see that the Lord is good. Woo! Amen. I am excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. We want to thank all of you for joining us tonight. I'd like to thank our participants. Um, we'd like to thank Sister Nicole, Sister Day, and the Sister Knight. Wow, Sister Day and Sister Knight. <laughs> we thank them. Thank you. Um, and we thank our, our pastor, Pastor Samuels, for such a powerful, powerful message tonight. Now, you cannot afford to miss tomorrow night. Um, oh, before I tell you about tomorrow night, if you have signed your, your decision cards, please expect someone to get in touch with you. Someone will definitely get in touch with you. And whatever your card requires, they will, by God's grace, fulfill. They'll be praying for you and they will lift you up to the throne of grace. Um, so tomorrow night, do not miss tomorrow.